Okay, good morning everybody. So we're back on this project with uh, create parts to mount the digital readout on a 21 inch plus and pull tester. This is the factory mounting bracket that came with the uh, glass scale. <clears throat> and I need to cut this to a profile. I showed that in another video, but uh, maybe not end up using that one. I'll, I'll probably just show you another shot. That video wasn't that great. But anyways, I need to cut this thing to a profile that fits the dovetail on the top slide of the closing cold tester lid. So that means that I need to set it up on a 30 degree angle plate. I've got a whole set of these that a friend of mine gave me. They're really interesting. I think these are uh, pattern making tools is what they actually are. I've got a set of these that goes uh, one degree increments, one through five. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and then 10, 20, and 30. Now in the, all of the uh, shallower angles, I have matched pairs of these. The 30 degree, which is what I need, I only happen to have one, but that'll work okay for what we're doing. But the part that's strange about these is that they have almost no accommodation for holding anything on them or even holding them down. They have little peg holes in the side. So I'm gonna uh, clamp these down using these little uh, tiny nose type uh, toe clamps, but in order to clamp that to the top of it, I'm going to do something that I thought I was going to do all along and never got around to, and that's I'm going to drill myself, I think I'm going to go with six and a half inch holes, drill and tap them in the top of here, so that I can clamp stuff directly to the block itself. So that's what we're getting set up to do here. I'm going to do a little bit of edge finding here in a minute. So because I was always traveling this direction when I set those holes, I go past and then come back to my number this side. That's just one of the, uh, I'd say everybody knew it in the old days, but we're not used to that. Now I'm, I'm pretty accustomed to running manual machines, so it's not a foreign concept to me, but on a uh, 
boring mill or a jig borer, these old manual machines, all the old timers would go past their number if they always approached their final number from the same direction. And then on a boring mill, it's really important to always be coming up with the head because they're counterweighted and if they're a little sticky or floaty, if the counterweight's a little bit aggressive, you can end up with uh, really bizarre float situations if you come down to a number with the head. This hole is going to be tricky because my clamp is straight behind this hole and I don't have, I can't go through the hole by very far without uh, crashing into the clamp. So when I get to tapping, I may stop a little bit short and finish that one after the fact. shifting between high and low range um, for the tapping versus drilling and it's another one of those where you can tell I'm not a uh, lifelong boring mill operator. It's the guys I forget about half the time to shift between high and low just as it's coasting to a stop so otherwise these big straight cut gears engage in I want to clash and crash and I have to rock the spindle by hand. If you watch the uh, spline drive shaft just before it stops spinning you can quick shift gears smoothly All right, so my plan is starting to become apparent here. So there's my piece of uh, scrap aluminum. I have drilled and counterbored it to accept a couple of uh, button head um, socket heads. Bolted those down to repair. Now, I may have to come back and indicate that in, but the whole point of that is to give me something to attach this to that I don't care if I machine into a bit is the real idea of it. Um, I want to be able to, you know, fully cut this edge, cut the top edge, and not care if I nick the thing I'm bolted to. And then I also needed something that would let me attach clear out at the ends on this thing where it's, so I've drilled this for clearance holes to let me bolt that in from the backside. So what I'm going to do now is bolt that on and then indicate up and down it. And I've got, I've intentionally drilled these holes a bit oversized. These ones are as well, but right now I've just got them shoved down against the bottom and tightened up in the hopes that there's enough playing these to let me get this thing indicated in square and just go to cutting it so I'll do a little indicating and bring you back we're ready to try cutting alright this is the first time I'll have ever used high range in this machine um, as you may recall one of my previous videos I replaced the belts in here they were shot and I never actually used them this would be kind of cool on the side of the river.
Pretty cool. You know, fair amount of deflection, so when I come back across like this at high speed, it leaves some uh, chatter marks, but we'll take a cleanup pass when we get down to mentioning. You see, I've kind of marked on the end. This is roughly what we're headed for, but I'll probably stop a little short because I really don't want to get into that screw, and I don't think I need the full profile.
We're on the final cut here. I just left a little lip so the cutter wasn't quite wide enough to finish that cut. So I'm buzzing that lip off. And then we are, I think, done with this part other than it's got to get some drilling and tapping fitting done at the shop where I'm working on this. But anyway, once I yank this off here, I'll go uh, stick it up against that closing and show you what it is I'm trying to create here. All right, so this starts to give you some idea what I'm trying to do here. Um, this thing is actually going to hang past the end a little bit in order to get the travel to all work out right. Um, support the end of the scale, and then you can see I'm, I'm planning on drilling and tapping those two mounting holes in. Um, I may, on this end, go ahead and drill through and tap into, we'll see, into the uh, cross slide with the uh, screw that holds the scale on too. Um, this end's a little flimsier than I like, just hanging out here like this, but it'll work for what it's doing. It, it's going to hang out about that far. But anyways, so that's the idea. I just had to fill in that dovetail because it fell right on the edge of the scale. There was just no good way to get that scale squared up where it needed to be. So anyhow, we're going to go install this thing. I'll probably shoot you a quick video of it once I get it all put together. So, catch you next time.